What's going on guys? My name is Jonathan Yench and thank you for tuning in to today's video. Now today we're going to be talking about car camping. More specifically, I'll be sharing with you guys some tips that I've picked up on over the past few years of adventuring and sleeping in my car. First, let's just quickly define exactly what I mean when I say car camping. Car camping is the act of camping or sleeping and or living in your car. Sure, this might seem pretty obvious, but I've often heard car camping referred to as simply camping in an area where you have easy access to your car, as opposed to something like hiking in and camping out of a backpack, which I guess would just be considered backpacking. Regardless of semantics, car camping is an invaluable way to save tons of money on hotels and or Airbnbs, or if you're just being too lazy to set up your tent. I must warn you now though, you might get spoiled once you start car camping and you might just become very lazy about setting up your tent in the future. I wanna just quickly give a little disclaimer. All of the knowledge that I'm sharing with you is drawn from a point of personal experience and opinion and preference. So take it with a grain of salt, make sure to do your own research before you do anything or decide on anything and make sure you're doing what's comfortable for you. We're gonna be breaking up the tips into three separate sections. First is gonna be setup and organization. Second will be picking an actual spot. And third is security and discretion. The first step to having a successful car camping trip is organization. You don't want to be dealing with a whole mess of clutter when you're camping because it's just going to decrease your overall level of joy that you're experiencing. So some people go all out with their car camping setups. I've seen plenty of people with sleeping platforms and pull out drawers and cabinets built. Some even have things like a place that their stove can go on top to cook. And although these are extremely nice and convenient to have, in fact, I actually do plan on building something like this in the future in my own car, I'm here to say they are definitely not necessary. You can get by with just the basic seats folding down in the back of your car, as long as you have enough room to be comfortable. You do want to make sure that you have enough space to lay out your sleeping pad and your sleeping bag. You wanna take all of your loose items and put them in actual storage containers. That way you don't have things winding up all over the car while you're trying to sleep and you know exactly where everything that you need is gonna be. Ideally, you would be able to put items of similar categories together. For example, all kitchen and cookware stuff in one box and anything camping related in another box. And remember, if you're sleeping with two people or you just want to have more space, you can always take those storage boxes and put them in the front seat when it's time to go to bed. That way you have the entire back of your car for sleeping. All right, so it is much later in the day, obviously, and right now I'm currently headed to go sleep in the parking lot of a store that I was at earlier. You'll see more of that in a couple minutes. Essentially, while I was at the store, I happened to realize what an amazing parking lot this would be to car camp in. So I decided to go ahead and spend the night there and show you guys just how easy it is to car camp and spend the night in a parking lot. So I'm headed there now. Until then, enjoy the rest of the video and I'll see you again soon. So there's really gonna be a few main options to choose from when picking a spot to car camp. First, you could do parking lots, which are my personal favorite. We'll get more into that later on. Second is gonna be residential streets. And third is things like pool outs and rest areas and things like that, which I don't really have experience with. So we're going to be sticking to residential streets and parking lots for this video. So like I said, parking lots are by far my favorite for a few reasons. First of all, they provide a sense of security. Again, this is a personal preference. I've heard people say that they don't feel safe in parking lots, but I kind of like the idea of having other cars around and uh, established businesses. And I think it just seems 
less likely that somebody's going to come try and do something while you're parked in a parking lot. The second reason is you don't actually have to be that low key about hanging out in the parking lot before you go to bed as if you were staying the night somewhere residential. And lastly, if you're at the parking lot of a store, you have the convenience of that store. Grocery stores are typically open pretty late and they open really early in the morning. So if you need to run in and get any snacks late in the night, or if you're like me, and you usually have to go to the bathroom pretty much right when you wake up in the morning, you have that luxury at your disposal as well. If you guys have any experience with car camping and you have opinions or any stories you would like to share, please just drop them down below in the comments. I'd love to hear about that. The first tip for picking a nice parking lot to sleep in is just to make sure that you're in a nicer neighborhood. But at the same time, you wanna make sure that it's not too nice because the nicer it is, the more likely it is they're gonna have a security guard who regulates the parking lot and you can potentially get kicked out. You do wanna make sure it's a pretty decently nice neighborhood because you don't want to feel sketchy while sleeping there. One time I stayed at a Walmart in Fresno and I actually woke up in the middle of the night to some kind of, I don't know if it was gang meeting or what it was, but there was all kinds of cars and people blasting music and it was the cars with like the hydraulic systems and it was literally like three in the morning. Luckily I had my windows tinted so I didn't really care too much, but it was definitely a little more unnerving sleeping somewhere like that than a more upscale neighborhood. So do make sure to pick a nicer, less sketchy neighborhood to sleep in. I always like to try to find parking lots with multiple shops. For example, there could be something like a supermarket and a convenience store and a couple restaurants. And the reason is that if there's just one main shop, then there's more likely going to be a security guard that they pay to go and make sure that other customers or other people aren't parking in their lot. Whereas if there's a lot of different stores, then they're not really gonna have a security guard because there's so many different stores and there's so many different places that people could be. So they can't really regulate who's parking there and who's not. So I always like to just find parking lots with many different shops, just for that extra peace of mind, really. And finally, you want to look for parking lots that have other cars, especially cars that look like they might be fellow car campers or cars that appear to be spending the night as well. That way you don't stand out as much and your chances of being approached by a security guard or a robber or something like that are much slimmer because there's many other cars in the area. For car camping on residential streets, you're going to, again, want to find a balance of somewhere that's really nice and comfortable, but also not Beverly Hills status or somewhere where there are definitely people who will report any kind of suspicious activity. I don't know about you, but my car is pretty old. So I feel like if I parked in a really upscale neighborhood, somebody out there, Karen, I know, I know you're out there somewhere, Karen, they will call the cops for whatever reason they don't want you to park in front of their house. So make sure to find the right balance. Finally, I have found that when I've parked on streets with many different apartment complexes, I think that you could be a little more safe just because somebody who happens to see you out of their window of like a big apartment complex isn't really gonna care as much as if you're parked in front of their own personal house. For whatever reason, like I said, I don't know why people don't like you to park in front of their house, but it is what it is. So if you could find a street with a lot of apartment complexes, chances are you're gonna be just fine. All right, so we have made it to the destination. I cruised around the entire lot for a little bit. There's a few other shops here. There's a Target and Bed Bath & Beyond and a couple other things. So I cruised around the entire parking lot looking for the best spot. It was really empty over by Target, like not even another car in sight. So I decided not to stay there. And so I decided that this would be the best spot. So now I'm just gonna go crawl into the back, set up the car, I'm gonna put the shades up and call it a night. All right, y'all, I'm gonna hit the hay now. It's really late and I'm really tired, so I'll just see you guys in the morning.
No matter where you end up sleeping, whether that be a parking lot or a street or wherever, you're gonna want to be discreet and feel as secure as possible. The main thing, or at least the first thing that you should worry about is making sure that you have some sort of way that other people can't look in and see you sleeping. There's gonna be a few different ways that you can do this and I will tell you about each of them. First of all, and this is probably the best by far, tinted windows. Now obviously tinted windows are great because there's no setup involved. You literally just park and sleep in the back of your car and you don't have to worry about it. But also I really like tinted windows because you're able to still look out and see what's going on and people can't look in and see you. That's gonna be your best bet if you plan on doing a lot of car camping. The next method for blocking your view to the public when you're car camping is gonna be these kind of covers that you put over your windows that you make out of this roll up reflective insulation. Hold on. Got them. Now I will admit I did a pretty bad job making those cause A, I've never done it before and B, I was trying to do that and have enough time to still film so I kind of rush through everything. But that being said, I'll probably make some more in the future. Maybe I'll even make a video showing how exactly I made them. And the last way to block the outside world from your car, which actually really works well if you're in a crunch or if you just don't really wanna spend that much money. Trash bags, black trash bags specifically. You basically get a bunch of black trash bags and you duct tape them to the inside of your car. And yes, it does look really ghetto from the outside, but like I said, it's good if you're in a pinch, a crunch, a pinch, whatever and or you just don't want to spend money. In fact, one time I was even in downtown San Francisco, like downtown, downtown, and I was with a buddy and we wanted to go out and drink for the night and I ended up having a park in downtown and this is the method that I use. I just taped trash bags to my windows and I thought that it was gonna be kind of crazy, but it worked, it was, it was fine, you know? There was people yelling all through the night, but I survived. So yeah, trash bags, they work great, don't rule them out. If you ever are in a crunch and you need something quick, trash bags are the way to go. And that's pretty much everything I've got for you today. I could go more in depth about certain topics, but I don't want the video to carry on forever. So if you are interested in hearing about something more specific, more in depth, then do feel free to let me know in the comments. I will gladly make videos addressing each of these kind of topics and areas a little bit more thoroughly in the future. And remember to have fun with it. Don't get too worried guys, I mean car camping is really easy. Once you do it for the first time you'll realize how easy it is and then you'll never have a problem with it again. I guess until you do have a problem because something happens, but hopefully that doesn't happen. So as long as you're being smart, I think you guys will be okay. So last night it was really crazy. I was sleeping at that parking lot in the Target that you saw and all of a sudden I heard this aggressive knocking on the car. It kept knocking and it was clearly like a security guard or something. And I wasn't gonna answer but eventually he said that he was gonna call the police if I didn't come out so I, <laughs> so I ended up getting out of the car and I, Obviously I had to leave at that point. He told me I couldn't sleep there. And it was really weird and ironic that I have never had any kind of run in or encounter with the security guard or any problem or issue at all. And in the one time that I make a video on how to car camp and I'm heavily raving about how great parking lots are to sleep in, that's the one time that I get told to leave by a security guard, but. <sighs> The law of attraction or Murphy's law or whatever law applies, right? Oh, excuse me. Oh. It's all good though, because 
Luckily, I drove down the street. It was like 2 a.m. too, by the way. I get out of my car and I drive down the street, and luckily I found another cool parking lot. This one looked smaller, and I think that uh, there probably isn't a security guard. At least I haven't gotten to talk to one. Um, but that's the reason why I woke up so early, so I could wake up and get out of here before something else happened. So I'm going to hang out for a bit, and then I'll show you guys around real quick. And then we'll get on with our lives, so... So this is the parking lot that I ended up switching to. As you can see, it's a lot smaller than that other parking lot that I was in. And it does feel a little bit more homey in general, so... I wasn't mad about having to sleep here instead. So the more I look at it, the more I realize that the covers that I made and the spray paint looks really obvious and kind of sketchy and you just kind of stick out if you're trying to park in a spot where you're not supposed to park overnight. Chances are that somebody who is looking will recognize and know that somebody's sleeping in the car. So definitely gonna just go back to my tinted windows when I have the means to get those tinted. So overall, I'm gonna still consider that a partial success. I mean, I did get kicked out for the first time ever, but it wasn't a big deal. I mean, he was pretty cool about it. And I did find another parking lot right down the street and it worked out. I slept through the night and I had no problem. So I'm still gonna endorse sleeping in parking lots. They're still really nice. And as long as you pick the right one, I guess I didn't pick the right one at first. Uh, I think you should be fine. So I'm gonna let you get back to the normal video now because I'm gonna go home and reflect on my life, so. So, obviously things didn't exactly go as planned, but that's okay. I still completely stand behind all of the points that I was making earlier in the video. Obviously I could have chosen to completely omit that incident and pretended like nothing ever happened, but I mean, that's just the reality of car camping. No matter where you park, no matter what precautions you take, you're always running a risk that some security guard is gonna tell you to leave or someone's gonna call the cops or whatever might happen. God forbid something sketchier happens, like if somebody were to come mess with your car. All the steps that I was talking about were just precautionary measures to try to limit that risk. And the fact that this was the first time I have ever had any kind of encounter out of the many times that I have car camped is pretty indicative that they are sound steps to follow, at least to me. So I'm gonna continue to take the same measures when picking what car camping spot works best for me. If you wanna completely disregard everything I said and you no longer trust me, then that's up to you. I'm drinking iced coffee because it's been really hot in Portland lately and it's kind of nice. I kind of like it because this, A, the, the iced coffee is really good and, and B, it's just the heat. I, I used to really not like heat, but something about the Portland heat is a lot better than the California heat, I'll tell ya. All right, I'm gonna let you guys get on with your day. I hope you enjoy the rest of it. Go out there and go on some adventures and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.